Hey guys, welcome back to The Crafty Couple. Today we've got these awesome Valentine's Day DIYs. Also, if you guys enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments which one's your favorite. For the first project, you'll need two of these love signs from Dollar Tree. And we're going to put them both together and turn it sideways to give it this shiplap look. You'll want to take off both of the metal hearts and go ahead and save those so you can use them for a future project. Once those are off, flip both of the signs over and we're going to attach both of them with popsicle sticks and a glue gun. Next, I painted everything white using the Waverly chalk paint Next, we are using the color truffle to distress all of it and make it look more like wood. For the heart, you'll grab one of these signs also from Dollar Tree. Then I took off the sparkly love sign on the front. Then take off all of the red wire on the front. You'll be left with all these notches on the side that you'll need to cut off. When that is done, there's just a couple more things that you'll want to razor off. There's this little bit of plastic that kind of overspilled and then also this tab that's on there. And just take a razor and cut it off. It's pretty easy. Now you want to just paint the whole thing using the color ink. And then finally sponge on some of the mineral color as well. And I got this sponge from Dollar Tree. I just rip off pieces. It's in the bath section and I really like how it applies paint. Now that they're both complete, it's time to hot glue the heart onto the shiplap signs. For our next project, we're going to use this sign that we got from the Dollar Tree. First thing that we want to do is start taping around the Valentine's part, that way we don't get any paint on it. Once we've got it all taped, we can move on to painting. And I actually forgot to remove this red ribbon at the top, so you'll want to make sure you do that before painting as well. And I just put two coats of this white Waverly chalk paint on it that we got. We'll have a link for that in the description below. Once we have the two coats of white on, we can start distressing. I'm just using this ink chalk paint to start with the distressing. I'm going to start with the lines so I can get some of that dark distressed look inside there and around the outside of this.
One thing I like to do while I'm distressing is you, you can use a rag or in my case I'm just using a paper towel. I use a dry and a damp one. It just helps me get a look that I'm going for instead of just hoping the paint turns out. As you can see, you can use it more like an eraser versus a distress tool. Whereas a lot of times when you're distressing, you're using a rag or a paper towel and wet distressing, we're just kind of erasing some of the extra paint that we don't want. Once I've got all of the black distressing on here, I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape and we'll move on to the last part of distressing. Once we're done with all of the black distressing, I'm going to go in now with this brown truffle chalk paint and this is going to give it more of that worn wood look and you can actually create little circles like I'm doing here to act as knots in the wood and then the rest of it you're just going to dry brush to give it that worn distress look. If you wanted you could just leave it as is and prop it up on a table. We decided to use a little bit of twine to tie on this. All I did was put it through the two holes, tie a knot, that way we can hang it on the wall. And I actually used some of that dry brush of the black and truffle and put that on the twine to give it a little more of an aged look as well. To make this sign, you'll want one of these kid puzzles. You can either take out all the pieces or glue them in, and then you'll want to sand off the text on the back. Then go ahead and stain the whole thing using the dark walnut Minwax stain. For the lettering, I used a stencil that I got from Joann's, and I'll leave a link below for that. And I taped it on there and I used the Waverly chalk paint in white and just stenciled it on. As you can see, since I did do two layers of the white paint, it spilled through just a little bit. Go ahead and take some acetone and a brush and go around the letters and then a little bit of stain and it'll clean it right up. And then finally for the hearts, Dollar Tree had these really cute wood stickers and I used all the pink ones that came in this pack. They do have a sticky side to them, but they came off within about an hour, so I would hot glue them on instead. For this project, we're going to use this blue bucket from the Dollar Tree and paint it with this antique pewter spray paint. It's a Rust-Oleum forged hammer and I think it gives it a really good looking metal look as a base. To start distressing I'm going to use this brown truffle paint just as I did in the other sign earlier in the video and just going to paint on a really light coat here and same method that I did with the heart sign from earlier using a wet and a dry paper towel I'm gonna to start erasing some of this that I don't need and make it look a little bit more natural instead of painted on there in addition to the brown I'm also gonna go in with some black just to add some more distressing to it, give it a little bit more of a grunge look, and then also fill in some of those pits that you can see in the paint. You can see all of that right there. Next we're going to use this little sign, and we actually created this ourselves. So let us know in the comments if this is something you guys would be interested in using. 
I'm sure we can figure out a way to link it so you guys can download this or uh, if we make any other ones as well. And what we're going to do here is just Mod Podge it on the front. So what I did is just eyeballed where I wanted it and then put a layer of Mod Podge on first and you want to try and cover that whole surface. Next we're going to lay down the actual sign and then Mod Podge over that as well. To finish this project, we're going to use these roses that we got from Dollar Tree. They come in a bundle of three, and I'm just bending them so they fit in here and don't stick out so much. We ended up using eight of them. If you're wanting to fill the entire bucket, you're going to need quite a few more than that. But just for the project purpose and to show you guys how it would look, we went with eight. Then for the last project, you'll need two of these heart wreath forms. Went in with a sponge with the mineral paint all over the whole thing. For the one that'll be in the back, you'll need to paint the inside. Once they are completely dry, you'll want to zip tie them together. I did put a zip tie at the top when I first made it, but I found that putting the three at the bottom held it together just fine. Then I'm going to use these flowers that I got from Amazon. I've used them for several other projects, so I had them on hand, but you can definitely go to Dollar Tree and get some other flowers. The link for these specific flowers will be in the description. I arranged all of them how I thought I wanted them before I zip tied them on. It just makes it a little bit easier. Once I figured out how I wanted it, I just grabbed the bunch of three and zip tied it to the back. Then just cut off the long stems. Then I just did the exact same thing on the other side. Now that everything is zip tied together, I'm going to be using these fairy lights that I got from Dollar Tree and wrap it around the whole entire heart. And this part is completely optional. I think it looked great without the lights, but I do like how it looked with them.
Thanks for watching guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time we upload a new video.